Hello, my friends. I have a fun routine for you. This is a morning lift. Anytime you feel like you need to power up your pelvic floor, this is gonna be perfect for you. So great for bladder issues, prolapse, etc. We're gonna do some strengthening. And because it's the morning, let's go ahead and start kind of slowly, actually in a chair. So I'm gonna grab my chair. If you have a couch handy or a chair, just something where you can sit down, we're gonna begin by going through what I use in my lift program, which by the way, amazing new, newly redesigned, revamped lift program. Check the notes in under the video description. You're gonna really want to look into this if you do have prolapse or bladder leakage. But one thing we always do in my lift method is to begin by priming the pelvic floor before the workout. So a great way to do this is just with breathing. I want you to begin sitting down, nice tall position, sitting on your sitting bones, no slumping, no tucking your tailbone under. Nice and lifted. I know it's morning, but you can do this. We breathe in and out into our belly. I want you to feel as you exhale that you're hugging your belly inward. So inhale expansively and exhale, feel as if you're hugging your belly in. Not a sucking in like this, just a gentle hugging inward. Now on the next inhale and exhale, I want you to feel not only that hugging inward of your belly, but also a lifting of your pelvic floor. So it's an inhale, expand, and then an exhale, lifting of the pelvic floor and a hugging inward of the belly. Go ahead and use your hands to help with this. Inhale, expand. Exhale, hug inward and lift. One more, inhale, expand. Use your arms, it feels so good. Exhale, hug inward and lift. All right, let it go, shake it out, and come down onto the floor for our next set of moves. We're gonna begin on our belly for a hip extension. So come on down carefully onto your belly. And moves on your belly or on your hands and knees are actually wonderful for bladder prolapse. They're great for all types of strengthening, but if you have bladder prolapse, these are great moves for you. So straighten one leg out behind you and then the other. You are going to lift up one side and then the other side. Being sure that you're balanced and equal between the right and the left side. Sometimes it's easier to lift one side versus the other. Notice that in your own body and try to make them the same. So if this feels like no problem at all, lifting one leg and then the other and making sure it's balanced and equal, then you can add in the opposite arm. So for example, right leg and left arm lift and then left leg and right arm. So keep breathing steadily going really slow, slow and controlled. Your head is neutral, it's not cranked up like this. Keep it looking down really, about two to three feet in front of you. Breathing steadily. And let's do five more on each side. Five. Four. Three, two, and one, and done. Nice job. Relax the bottom, let it go. It's really important to not overly contract the glute and hip and pelvic floor muscles so we release them between exercises. Let it go, and we're gonna do one more move on our belly. So this is gonna add a twist. Use your hands by your sides, maybe even behind your head, and you're going to lift the left leg up and twist the right arm up off the ground. So the right arm or the right elbow off the ground, twisting, twisting, and set it down. Now right leg and left arm lifts and set it down. Left leg, right arm and set it down, breathe steadily. Left arm, right leg, and set it down. Just one more time on each side, slow and controlled. Opposite, arm and leg twisting, and set it down. 
Last one here, twisting and set it down. All right, nice job. Relax and release again and flip onto your back. So onto your back, we're gonna move into a bridge. Bridge moves are wonderful for rectocele or any kind of prolapse, really, really helpful. So knees are right over your feet and I want you to inhale, come on up with your hips and then set it down. Honestly, you can breathe either way, inhaling on the way up or exhaling on the way up. That's usually the way I teach in my lift program is to exhale on the way up. But as long as you're breathing steadily, I'm happy. Just don't hold your breath. So lift those hips up and then come on down. If you can only make it a little bit off the floor, that's okay. So just keep working on it, keep practicing, and you'll get higher and higher with your hips. This is a great inversion. When you're up, it's strengthening the hips, strengthening the core. It's also reducing pressure on the pelvic floor. Now, if you want to, I love doing this in the morning, adding on some arms. So inhaling those arms up and down with your hips, breathing steadily. Let's do four more, four, breathing steadily, three, two, powering up the pelvic floor. Make sure the knees are close together. They're not flared apart like this. They're close, active through the center line of your body, active through the glutes, active through everything, and release all the way. Let the legs drop apart, flop apart, and rock side to side. Let it go. Now flop around onto your hands and knees and we're gonna come onto the hands and knees for a wagging the tail exercise. Really important for prolapse and bladder issues or pelvic health issues of any type to keep the tissues in the abdomen and the hips really mobile and supple. We want strength, of course, but we don't want clenched tightness. We want everything to be able to move and groove. So I call this exercise wag the tail. You're thinking about swooping your hips to the right and maybe even looking over your shoulder and looking at your bottom and then swooping your hips to the left and looking over your shoulder, looking at your left bottom. So going to the, from the right to the left, looking and wagging your tail, breathing steadily. And why I love this move is it is strengthening this side waist and stretching the other side. And then we're going the other way, strengthening this, this side waist and stretching the other side. Couple more times back and forth. If you need to have your hands in fists, you can. Breathe steadily. Last time to the right and to the left. And then just release, roll out the hips a few times. Should feel really, really good. Don't think, just move. All right, from here, we are going to strengthen. Find that nice tabletop back alignment. So strong and lifted through the pelvic floor, belly button to spine. Keep everything really still and stable as we lift the right leg up off the ground. Hold it, hold it. Flex the foot at the ankle. So you're flexed at the ankle and just reaching that leg back. Look down and see that your toes are pointing down toward the floor. They're not tilted out to the side. So pointing down, belly is lifted toward the spine. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Super strong. And then release down. Let it go. Release, release, release. Engage again. Pelvic floor gently lifts, low abs pull in, super strong. Other side. Left leg goes back straight back like you're kicking someone behind you. Make sure that your toes are pointed down toward the floor. Really lengthen. So it's not about how high you can lift, it's about lengthening straight back. Holding it, belly pulls toward your spine. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And release down, good. Shake it out, let it go. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna add an the opposite arm. So engage again, one more time. Engage the core, pelvic floor first, right leg straight back behind you, hold it, toes point down. 
If you feel good, then lift the left arm up. Lift, lift, lift. Hold it. Three, two, one, and release down. Shake it out. Let it go. And re-engage. Pelvic floor, low abs, super strong through the core. Left leg back behind you. Toes point down toward the ground. And now reach that opposite arm. Reach, reach, reach. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Three, two, one, and down. Oh, very, very good. Now I'm going to show you one more move, but take a minute to come back and roll out your wrists. One more move on your hands and knees for your outer hips. So important to strengthen those hip rotators when we're working on our pelvic health. I'm going to keep rolling out your wrists. All right, come back onto your hands and knees, and here's the move. Strong again through the core, belly button pulls to spine. Don't let your back round. Now, in this position, same thing with the right leg. Same exact thing, but now turn the foot out to the side and bring the entire leg out to the side without tipping over. So you wanna keep equal weight through your hands and bring that leg straight out and lift it high like you're moving toward your shoulder with that foot. Try not to tip, keeping everything really stable and strong. You're gonna be shaking, that's good. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and then come on back down. Release it out. Oh, that's so much. Okay, let it go. And other side. Pelvic floor, low abs, strong core, tabletop back. Straighten the leg out behind you, toes point down. Now rotate them out to the side and go out, out, out without tipping your upper body. Lift that leg high, bring it forward, forward, forward. Lift it high, lift it high, lift it high. Hold it. So strong, keep breathing. Strong core, hold it, hold it. Last count and let it down. That's a lot, let it go. Shake it out, go the other way and come back onto your heels one more time, roll out the wrists. All right, let's stand up for our final moves in standing. You should be feeling powerful. Exhale as you stand up and we're gonna begin with some diamond squats. You're gonna see a lot of these in the lift program. If you are not familiar with my diamond squat, it's a little plie, heels together, toes apart. You wanna be going straight down and straight up. So it's not a forward motion like this. It's a straight down and straight up. Feel the inner thighs zipping together and pelvic floor engaging as you straighten the legs to stand. Now add some arms. The arms kind of mimic what your pelvic floor is doing. That lift of your pelvic floor as you engage the inner thighs together. You can even add the breathing. Inhale and then exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Five more. Go down as low as you'd like, keeping your knees tracking over your middle toes. So you're really pressing those legs open. A couple more. Make this flowing with the arms. This helps wake your whole body up. Nice job. Straighten the feet out, toes pointing forward. Little tiny squats, nothing crazy. We don't have to go big with this. But what I want you to do next is add some hip flexion, one leg at a time initiating the motion from your pelvic floor. So feel as if you are really, first of all, sitting back, and then when you stand up, you're going to lift one leg up off the ground and then sit back down gently. So exhale, lift one leg up, and then set it back down, sit back. So exhale, lift one leg up, and then sit down, set it, set it down gently and sit back. Got it? I want you to, again, think about initiating that lift from your deep pelvic muscles. So, think about initiating from the pelvic floor, the low abs, everything connected through that deep core, sitting back in between. Keep going. 
couple more. We're almost done. This is so important for balance, which you've got to use it or you'll lose it. So challenge that balance. Last one on each side. Challenge that balance. Initiate from your pelvic floor and now let it go. Shake out the legs, big hip circles to release. So I want you to think about circling out your hips in any way that feels good. Let your knees be loose. They don't have to be straight. Just let it go. Let go of your back muscles. Let go of your ab muscles. Totally release. Feel your pelvic floor muscles opening as, you, as your inner thighs stretch and go the other way. Our final move is optional, but highly recommended. It's to do some push-ups at the wall. Now, push-ups are not always recommended for those who are just starting out on their pelvic health and prolapse recovery journeys because it can be a challenge to get into the plank push-up position. It can be a challenge on your pelvic floor when you're first getting started with um, developing core strengths down here again. So we're gonna do this at the wall standing with our hands in fists. So I'm gonna come on over. Hands are in fists. I want you to engage the pelvic floor first, then the low abs. You're standing a little ways away from the wall. Hands are in fists and you're gonna come down and then exhale to push back up. So here we go. Pelvic floor first, low abs, straight like a plank body, and we go down and then exhale up. Down, exhale up. Down, exhale up. Keep going, keep going. So I want you to keep going and notice that your arms are going back like this. You're feeling your shoulder blades come together and then go out as you straighten your arms. Shoulder blades come together and then go out as you straighten the arms. Come together and go out. Body is straight like a plank the whole time. Pelvic floor first, low abs, and you're breathing steadily. Finish up, and when you're done, come back and shake it out. <sighs> nice job. It's so important to release and relax after you're done with a workout. So you can either shake out your legs or you can come onto your back and maybe lie down with your knees apart in a butterfly position or even with your hips propped up on some pillows. So I hope that was fun for you. I hope you feel powerful through the core and the pelvic floor. And if you want to learn more about my lift program, definitely check the notes below this video. It will help get you strong and ready to do exercise routines like this to keep your pelvic floor at its optimal functioning for prolapse, bladder leakage, really any type of, of pelvic health issue that requires a little bit of strengthening. It's a beautiful, well-rounded program that addresses not only exercise, but also lifestyle as well. So check it out, and until next time, remember, eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter. Bye.